The US has by far the largest defense budget in the world. It's been at the forefront of many groundbreaking technologies when it comes to military weapons like the fifth generation fighter, stealth bombers, etc. US Navy is the most well equipped Navy in the world. It operates around 10 nuclear powered supercarriers, which are more than all the other nations combined. But there is one area where the US seems to have lagged far behind anti ship missiles. The US currently uses Harpoon missile as the main anti ship weapon. Initially developed in the 1970s, it's seen many upgrades over the years, but is essentially a five decade old design. It's an over the horizon anti ship missile manufactured by Boeing. Harpoon has a capability to reach targets at a maximum distance of 80 miles or 130 kilometers. Harpoon has a speed of 0.7 Mach, which means it has high subsonic speed but not supersonic. When compared to the many other anti ship missiles being deployed, Harpoon seems prehistoric. For example, the Indo Russian BrahMos missile can fly at supersonic speed and have a range of 185 miles or 300 kilometers. The Chinese YJ 12 has a speed of around Mach 2 if launched from low altitude and up to Mach 3.2 if launched from high altitude. It has a maximum range of around 235 miles or 380 kilometers depending on launch altitude. The 3M22 Zircon developed by Russia can reach a speed of up to Mach 8 and has a range of 600 miles or around 1000 kilometers depending on launch trajectory. US does have SM1 and SM2 supersonic missiles which have a primary role of air defense with a secondary role of anti-ship missiles, but their small warheads are not capable of crippling a warship. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the US is not deploying supersonic anti-ship missile unlike countries like Russia, China and India. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium account time as a bonus. The US has been fighting with adversaries that have no or very small navy like Iraq or Afghanistan. All this while Russia and China were not in the radar. America was focusing on missile assets that were more in line with these battles like the development of drones. This led to a lull in the development of advanced anti-ship missiles. But things have changed. In the last decade, Russia and China have emerged as a critical threat. Both of these countries have strong navies and are actively pursuing ways to counter US Navy by developing a wide variety of anti-ship missiles. A warship can detect and track an incoming anti-ship missile depending on many aspects like the performance of its radars, how high the missile is flying above the surface of water and size of the missile. The first aspect, performance of the radar, is beyond control but the other two aspects are directly governed by the doctrine adopted. There is always a trade-off, let us understand this. A supersonic anti-ship missile can sustain their speed over long ranges if they use a parabolic trajectory where a lot of the distance is covered in the upper atmosphere where the air is thin. But when doing so, they are detected from much farther away. This is a natural phenomenon attributed to the curvature of the Earth. When an anti-ship missile is launched in sea-skimming trajectory, they tend to have a much smaller range and the platform launching them will have to be much closer to the enemy. The US has gone with the approach of having a missile that is subsonic but can be deployed with the low altitude flight path. To mitigate the trade off, some anti ship missiles are designed so they can carry a huge amount of fuel and burn them at a very rapid pace. 
Through this approach, they can achieve the goal of supersonic speed over long ranges, even when flying in sea-skimming, low-altitude trajectory. But this makes them very large, which increases their RCS, and makes them bigger targets for the radars to detect. Also, there's another factor that hinders them, that is the launch platform. The large anti-ship missiles can only be deployed from very large warships, or they'll have to be deployed in small numbers. U.S. Navy uses the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer. Arleigh Burke class was designed as multi-mission destroyer capable of anti-aircraft warfare (AAW), anti-submarine warfare (ASW), and anti-surface warfare (ASUW). U.S. Navy has 66 Arleigh Burke class warships in active service. Arleigh Burke class destroyer is among the largest destroyers built in the United States, having an overall length of 509 feet (155 meters) and displacement of around 9,200 tons. Harpoon being very compact in dimensions, 4.6 meters in length, 13 and a half inches in diameter, and less than 500 pounds, are deployed through their own launchers in Arleigh Burke class warships. Arleigh Burke class has Mark 41 vertical launch system (VLS) as the main weapons chamber, and can be used for bigger missiles. Each warship has a total of 90 or 96 cell Mark 41 vertical launch system, depending on variant. These can accommodate many different types of weapons, like Tomahawk cruise missile (SM-1), SM-2, or SM-3 missile, to name a few. But Mark 41 is not suitable for housing a large supersonic or hypersonic anti-ship missile. For example, a Tomahawk missile housed in the Mark 41 VLS has a length of 6 meters and a width of a half meter and has a mass of 2,900 pounds, whereas a Brahmos has a length of 8.4 meter and a width of 0.6 and has a mass of 6,600 kilograms. Similarly, P-700 Granite anti-ship missile used in Russian Kirov class has a length of 10 meters, a width of 0.85 meters, and weighs in at almost 15,500 pounds. The launch chambers used for Brahmos and P-700 are physically much bigger when compared to the Mark 41 VLS cells. So either the U.S. Navy will have to design an entirely new launch system, which will affect the vessel's capacity to accommodate the other weapons, or build a new class of guided missile destroyer. It must be noted that serial production of Zumwalt class of stealth destroyers, which are much larger than Arleigh Burke class, having displacement of 15,742 tons, is now cancelled and only three will be available for U.S. Navy. Even keeping all aspects into consideration, it can be said that the U.S. is lagging by a huge margin when it comes to anti-ship missiles. Brahmos missile, when using sea-skimming path, can achieve supersonic speed and strike at a distance of 110 miles or 180 kilometers, which is significantly greater than Harpoon. Russian 3M54 caliber is able to balance speed, trajectory, size, and range to a great extent. Certain variants of this missile, which have a size similar to Tomahawk, flies at subsonic speed in the initial stage and boosts to supersonic speed in the final part, achieving an excellent trade-off. Americans are deploying AGM-158C LRASM long -range anti -ship missile, to replace Harpoon. The missile is stealthy, has a range of 230 miles, and can reach high subsonic speed. U.S. Navy is in the process of acquiring Naval Strike Missile, which is developed by Norway-based Kongsberg Gruppen and U.S. missile maker Raytheon. The missile is smart and has a range of 100 miles and capability to fly at subsonic speed. Though better than Harpoon, these still have a long way to go and U.S. need to pull up the sock, especially when adversaries are deploying hypersonic missiles. America's Government Accountability Office GAO, report have stated that the U.S. currently lacks the defenses required to protect against the latest crop of hypersonic weapons being developed by China and Russia. The report states, China and Russia are pursuing hypersonic weapons because their speed, altitude, and maneuverability may defeat most missile defense systems, and they may be used to improve long-range, conventional, and nuclear strike capabilities. There are no existing countermeasures. 
It remains to be seen how the U.S. responds to this challenge. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.